guys, how's it going? It's freaking lunchtime here, and uh, I decided to pick up the camera. I already uh, forgot to put my food in. Been busy today, so I just put my food in now. Uh, well, not now. I put it in a, a while ago, but it's still going, cooking in the air fryer, making some tornadoes. Oh, just can't even walk today. Um, got to thinking about that GoPro, and I'm pretty sure, like, if you listen to the video yesterday, you're the tick, tick and then it threw feedback. Now, something that happened was when I reached into my truck, there was snow on the side of the truck. Camera pressed into snow, snow got on camera. Snow melted on camera because camera gets hot while running. And then water gets into speaker hole on side of camera. I'm thinking that's what happened is the water got in, shorted out the speaker, just enough to make it throw some feedback loops. And that's why it did what it did. Because last night after I was done filming, I grabbed the camera, I basically set it on record, aimed it at the nothing, just aimed it, watched the movie, and it recorded till it drained the battery right out and it never had the problem. So I'm thinking that's all it was, was a fluke, but I guess we'll find out, oh, dinner's done. I guess we'll find out uh, next weekend when we go ice fishing. So I'm gonna bring that one in. I'm gonna bring the session with me just in case that one shits the bed. Then we can just swap over to the session and film away or the uh, session five and film away. I do like getting the POV shots. They're always fun. I'd love to get aerial shots, but I don't own a drone. So that's out of the question. I don't think I wanna own a drone too. That's a lot of money. And you see a lot of YouTube videos where people will be doing that scenic aerial shot. And next thing, you know the freaking GoPro just comes piling down and explodes on the ground. Well, it doesn't explode, but it just, it just breaks itself, right? Cheapest one they have is the Mavic. It's like 600. It's basically the cost of my uh, kayak. And I think I want a kayak more than I want a drone. So save up the dollar dollar bills for that. Maybe if YouTube starts picking up or if I could figure out a way to make more interesting videos while doing my life or, you know, I get a better job making more money, then maybe I can afford more filming equipment like a drone or stuff like that to get different angles. Until then, it is what it is. Anyway, I have two of these delicious bastards to eat. I'm gonna drive that on my face and go from there. No idea what we're gonna do tonight. Um, I was tossing around the idea of a, uh, a food dehydrator. Not picking one up today or anything, but I've been wanting one for a while because you know you can go to grocery stores and you can buy end end meat basically you know when they um like when they cut up uh cold cuts and all that well the roast beef cold cuts is it's roast beef so they usually have the end of it the round end and they just kind of sell it as is my buddy joe buys that brings it home chops it up dehydrates it in his oven and makes his own beef jerky and i was thinking you know it'd be an awesome ice fishing snack that would be high in protein high in fats zero carbs would be homemade beef jerky because you buy the beef jerky from the store the jack links and all the other ones they're so loaded with sugar because they always treat them with sugar if you make it yourself you can basically do whatever you want you want to salt brine it to get uh, to, to marinate it salt brine it. you want to add your homemade spice like my homemade spice to it to give it that taste do that you know it's up to you if you want sugar in it add sugar if you don't want sugar because you're on that no sugar bandwagon then don't freaking add sugar it's that simple i've been tossing around the idea of an air of an air fry of a food dehydrator for a while now and the other benefit is is like if you buy bananas or apples or other fruits you can basically chop them up dehydrate them and then make chips like apple chips banana chips pretty good trail mix shit so I don't know, so it could be great instead of spending money at the store buying a bunch of snackos for ice fishing. Just make a bag of jerky, bring that with me, and then snack on jerky while I'm trying to catch fish. It sounds like the strat. Anyway guys, talk to you after work. Alright, well I got some good news. Uh, it's work's done, so that's awesome. Got some other good news. Wine for the, pro for the uh, to put a big propane tank on my heater has been shipped, so... Jesus, did you guys hear Oreo's burp? God, my dog takes after me way too much. I'm gonna let him out. Gotta get some jeans on. I gotta go up to the garage. I'm currently wearing my office pants, also known as pajamas. Sexy. Reason for wanting to go at the garage is I want to grab the uh, cover for that tent. She's nice and dried out now. So I figure let's go and pack it back up and get it the frig out of the house and get it ready for next weekend's ice fishing adventures. Should just empty out this dryer now and get this washer going. All right, I got my laundry upstairs. I want to come in here after and clean all this shit off of here. There's like a bunch of bills and stuff. They're all paid. It's just, I, I'm stupid. Like I got some bills transferred over so they email me and it's nice because it comes to my Gmail. Google Assistant picks it up and will remind me, like if I say um, what bills are due, Google will tell me like gas is due on the 14th, hydro is due on the 20th. But the, well, not hydro because I can't get that one transferred over. But it'll tell me like gas is due on this date. Your internet's due on the 26th. Your 
um, you know, it basically it'll tell me and I get it in my emails and I can check it in my, in my calendar on my phone and it'll tell me what's due when and I get reminders. Paperback is dead. I don't know why they keep sending me that. Anyway, it's kind of cold outside actually. I'm gonna put a jacket on for this just so I don't freeze my tits off because this shirt ain't exact thick. Sweet Jesus, I got like two freaking USB battery packs on me. Probably have about 13,000 milliamp hours in my pocket because uh, this one here is 5,000. And then this one here, I believe is 8,000. Yeah, this one here is 8,000 milliamp hours. Does that have a charge? Oh yeah, she's full. Sweet, cool. I brought them to use the GoPro and the big camera. Well, the camera I'm filming with now, but uh, GoPro shit the bed on me so hard that I never bothered. Oh man, the end of that driveway. She looks pretty gruesome. Maybe I should have put my boots on, came out here and shoveled for a bit. Got some cardios. I'm gonna get some cardios as we curse and swear as we try and get that tent back in. I came up with a new strat for the tent though, courtesy of Strakus, who also had the same problem with his tent that I have with mine, and that's that the strap that it comes with is complete junk. Like if I were to review that Freebill, I'll tell you right now, it's a great unit, but it does have flaws. Uh, there's a couple things that if I could change them, I would. Another thing I need to do is get this all sorted out, figure out what, how I'm gonna do. I like a smaller version of this tote just to put all my fishing stuff in, like my tackle and all that, just to have it all in one container. Tackle rods and everything. Maybe we'll go to Walmart tonight, see if we can get a smaller version of this tote. Something that I can put my rod, wherever the hell that is, it's right up there. So I should measure that, it's probably 30 inches maybe. It's 30 inches, then I can put my tackle my rod my tip up everything into one container because if i got to carry a propane tank in here with the chairs the shovel the auger a bucket heater fish finder and tent it's gonna get crowded pretty damn quick it's gonna get heavy pretty damn quick too so yeah this variable tent is great and all but it does have some flaws Let's go inside and I'll talk about them. So my first complaint about the Frabel Bro Series from 2020, they probably fixed this, but it's the strap. I don't even know where the hell it is, but the strap that they give you to tie this thing back up so that you can put it back in the tent, it's way too short, way too useless. And the fact that it's stitched to the device, if you do try and force that strap around, you're gonna rip your tent. End of story. So my solution was this, this, this strap here, and I don't have it in the right location. I wanna move it down and bundle up the bottom because this is the fat end this end's kind of skinny so i want to bundle i want to twist that around and bundle it up and then get it skinny so i can slide it back into the tent and get it closed and my only other complaint about it is the windows like the velcro inserted windows it's like they didn't measure the hole when they built them if they literally would have made look at this shit scammers what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> She's like underneath there. This is my new house? Freaking nerd cat. Like I was saying about the windows, it's like they didn't measure, they just got some shape and then they just created this idea and then slapped Velcro on it went, Christ is too small, send it. Because the windows don't fit. I've tried everything possible to make them fit. I've taken them off, tried to put them as close to the edge of the Velcro as possible to make them fit. They leak because they don't fit. So like I was talking to Strakus about it and he's like, well, that's not a big deal, right? You can just build your own windows. But if that shouldn't be the case. Like when this thing was brand new, it sold for 500 bucks. It was it was uh, like uh, four or, uh, 459 after tax, you'd be well over 500, brand new. You imagine you paid $500 for this, you get it on the ice, you go to put the windows in and it doesn't fit. You're gonna be one pissed off individual. Yeah, sure, it's an insulated unit, but if the windows are leaking air, who cares about insulation at that point? You got a freaking air leak in it. You're letting cold air in anyway. It's like, yeah, you just put a bunch of R32 insulation in your housing, but you forgot to put windows in. Guess what? It's still gonna be freaking cold in there. But as far as setup and teardown goes, guys, this thing is easy to set up and tear down as a single person. People are saying, oh, you're gonna have problems taking it down by yourself. Not really, you just go around, you literally go around, you push, well, first thing you do, on a lot of the ones that I watched online, like the Eskimos and the um, the clams, and there's people using the other fray bill, like the fray bill from this year, they actually have a thing on the inside of their roof, like a strap, where they can grab onto and pull down. I don't have that on this. My strap, for some reason, is on the outside. I don't know if that's meant to be anchored to a tree or what the, what, what, what the strat is there, or if you run a strap over top of it and you anchor it down so it doesn't pick up, I, I don't know. I honestly have no idea why there's a strap on the top of it. Doesn't matter, probably will never use it, it's there, cool. Um, I always push, I always 
pull the side walls out, then walk inside of it and push the center up to make the roof pop. Um, but as far as making it come down, all I literally do is step out of it, close the zipper for the door, reach my hand on top, push the bar down, it flops in on its own, and then I just go around pushing the walls in. Once all the walls are pushed in, I get my foot underneath one of the corners, I lift with my foot while pushing down on the top, and all the air comes out and the thing just collapses and folds in on itself. Then you lay it on its side, run your strap underneath, tie it up. And I usually don't bother putting it back in the bag then because I'm gonna just take it home, take it back out of the bag and lean it up over here to dry off right by this vent. There's a vent down here that I use to dry off my tent. Now, some people I talked to, I mentioned, like uh, I asked him, one of my buddies, because he has the six man version of the fray bill. Um, it's like a, it's two of these side by side. So I asked him like, well, how the hell do you dry that off after the end of the day? And he literally said to me, he goes, what do you mean dry it off? So like, he just bought his this year. It's going to be a molding mess come the end of the season, full of mold and mildew, unless he leaves it in the cold and it just builds up ice and then he doesn't care about it. Uh, I didn't look up online about people drying theirs out either. So I don't know exactly what strat they use. It's just after talking to Struckus and it made sense because, you know, that uh, the clam, you can tell Buddy with the clam there in the garage that uh, my buddy Trevor didn't really do much with it. He just basically used it and then put it away and he never dried out the canvas because when you set that thing up and you're in there for a bit, yeah, there's a bit of a stank, like an old, old baseball glove like smell to it, you know? Like it's been used and it hasn't been cleaned out and there's stuff growing in it, probably its own cultures and not too awesome. But as far as this thing goes, you know, besides those two little defects and the stupid strap and the uh, the windows, I love it. I think it's it's the cat's meow. There's plenty of room in there. Uh, if I don't bring the sled inside of the shelter, Sarah and I have tons of room. And what's going to be nice is we'll be able to put the propane tank behind us in the corner, put the heater where we had it behind the chairs so it's heating up behind us keeping our bums nice and toasty and our backs nice and toasty, which will then radiate the heat to the front. And if we need more power with the bigger tank, I don't mind cranking her on high and getting that freaking shanty like right toasty hot. It, it'll be awesome, it'll be great. Um, yeah, like I, I think this is probably one of the best purchases I've made for ice fishing. And I'm glad I went this route and didn't try and tough it out with the clam because there's no way in hell that Sarah and I could have both been in that clam. And if we were both in there, everything else was staying outside. Like everything. We'd have the chairs in there, our fishing rods, the sleigh would stay outside, everything would stay outside, and we'd have to go out if we needed anything, including snacks, because there'd be no room inside the clam for that. I don't even know how the hell we would have ran the heater in there, because that heater of mine's pretty big. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and try and get this thing back into the pouch, and then we will uh, get it out to the garage and go from there. And like I said, it's 545, Walmart closes at eight due to new COVID restricted hours. And if you're wondering what's going on over here, guys, remember that chicken I bought the other night? I was gonna air fry it. My buddy was like, have you ever tried chicken in your Instant Pot? And I was like, no. And he said, okay. He goes, it's easy. Literally put the chicken in, add a cup of water, hit poultry. But before you do that, he goes, add some maple syrup to it. And I said, what, maple syrup? And he said, yeah, add some maple syrup to it. He goes, spice it with whatever you want. He puts Montreal chicken spice, I ran out. So I just threw my spice on it and threw the uh, maple syrup in there. So mix it in with the water, throw it in, let it go. And it literally goes for an hour and a half on normal heat with high pressure. And he said, when it's done, he goes, you're gonna have the most succulent friggin' chicken ever. It's gonna be better than anything Swiss chalet can fart out. Now, that's not saying a lot because I don't like Swiss chalet chicken. I find it's drier than a friggin' fart, but you know, maybe you guys like Swiss Chalet, so hey, it's yours. But uh, anyway, I gotta stop talking and get this damn shanty in there and get it out of my life until the weekend, because I'm looking at this going, man, I really wanna go out there and give her a dangle, but I can't. It almost looks like I packed up a dead body. He seems pleased. The whole time I'm sitting there doing this, he's trying to help, like, he comes over, he sees me forcing, I'm like forcing the center clothes on, pulling the zipper up. He bites onto the back strap thing and just starts pulling on it. What are you doing? Like, why are you making my job harder? He doesn't know what's going on. Wait, did I just... T is the cat in there? Scampers! Scampers? Oh, you're right there. <laughs> he, the way he was acting, I thought the cat was stuck in there. I'm like, oh, that's great. Took me forever to get this closed. All right, so I'm going to bring this out to the gurge. Ah! Why? And I'll be right back. 
All right, so that's taken care of. I'm just gonna wait for that chicken to be done. I don't wanna go to Walmart right yet because it's only six. I'm gonna go at seven when there's only an hour left just to see if we can pick up a smaller tote to put fishing stuff in so I can have a more organized sled because right now, shit's everywhere. Alrighty folks, uh, while I was editing, I wanted to see how much footage I had for today because I didn't know how much footage I actually took. Apparently I talked about that free for a while. Don't get me wrong, I still love it. Just, you know, it has its flaws. Um, anyway, this thing's been done for a while, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, disable the slow cooker. Let's take a look at this pressure cooked chicken and see how awesome it looks. Right now my house smells so good with that venting. Literally, like, like you missed it because now I put the camera on him, he acts stupid. But he was, did you see him smell? Look at him. Look at him bear walk. <laughs> he can smell the air and he just, he knows something's yummy. And he wants it. I'm so glad I got a video of him bear walking. Up. Up. The bear walk. <laughs> you are. I don't know, I call it bear walking because he gets on his hind legs and he looks like a little bear cub. All right, this thing should be vented enough where I can pop the lid. Holy shit on a shingle. Wow, I think I boiled my chicken. Well, it was in there for an hour and a half, so it should be cooked. Let's take it out and take a look. There's Murphy meat just falling off the bone over here. Yeah, let's see that's cooked, so. All right, let me figure out how the hell I'm gonna do this because like this meat is literally just falling apart. Just like nothing, nice. Fogged up the camera. Obviously, I did something wrong while pressure cooking it because uh, I don't think it's supposed to come out looking like that or like that. And literally, the bones are like if I squeeze this hard enough, I could snap it. So I literally pressure cooked the cartilage out of it. However, look at the juice that's left over. That'd be a good soup base. Anyway, um,. I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna save this one for tomorrow. I'm gonna make another one for my supper today. And that way there, we can have some chicken tomorrow. I could also let this cool down and fire it in the blender with some mayonnaise and make some chicken salad. That'd be kind of, uh, kind of badass. Alrighty, well, once once was a chicken that was farm raised and, and clucking and stuff is now a pile of slop. So I'm gonna go drive this in my face. Obviously I did something wrong with the pressure cooking. I have to talk to my buddy about it. Never claimed to be a master chef. I just don't like buying my meals at restaurants all the time. I'd rather cook at home because it's sometimes cheaper and a lot of the times better for you. Unless you're me and then you destroy a chicken by overcooking it or something, who knows? <coughs> talk to you guys in a bit, bye. All right guys, it's about seven o'clock, so. Oh, it just smells so good in this house. I ate my chicken. It was good, but I think it would have been better if it, you know, didn't fall apart, right? Hey, right? That's all I get. So I'm gonna fire up the truck, I'm gonna rock a piss. We're gonna head off to Walmart. Like I said, I wanna see about getting a tiny tote. Not tiny, but you know, small enough. Put all my fish and shit in so I can try and organize it. Hello? Okay. Whatever that was all about. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I want to get a, a small tote, put um, all the fishing shit in. Basically to try and organize that sled. And I got some in the garage, but they're all not what I want. They're all big, so we'll go check it out. Now I know Struckus rocks a, a five pounder for his uh, propane tank due to it takes up less size in your vehicle. Or not your vehicle, but in your sleigh. Now he also has the 75 inch sled. I have the 60 inch sled. It was mentioned on uh, a couple friends of mine told me, oh, you should have got the 75. Problem is, is the 60 was expensive enough, okay? They sell them for like a hundred bucks. It's ridiculous. For the 75, it was $230. However, the 75 came with an extra 15 inches of storage capacity, uh, the cover and the tow bar. So you can hook it up to your sled or ATV and drag it across the lake. I don't have a sled and or an ATV, and I figured the 60 would be more than enough. We'll make it work, we'll make it do, we'll be fine. So just letting that truck heat up for a bit and then uh, we'll get out there and clear the snow off of it and freaking skedaddle off the Walmart. From biking all last summer, I wore through my shoe and now that piece of hard plastic is showing and it's ripping a hole in the back of my foot. I'm really upset because these are nice shoes and they're in perfectly good shape. It's just that, and I'm wondering if there's something you can buy to fix that. I'll have to look that up when I get back. All right, let's skedaddle. So as I mentioned about the problem with the GoPros in the cold, right? When the temperature drops, the GoPro lithium ion basically fails. And it's a common thing with cell phones and all that. Uh, I was looking up solutions online because there's gotta be a solution to the problem. And some people were saying, if you're gonna do extensive out outdoor videoing with your GoPro on a chest mount, 
or even if you're going to use it on the head mount. The easiest way to keep your GoPro from freezing, and this is kind of brilliant, I didn't even think about this. You know those little hand warmer things I bought? The uh, little pouchy, you open it up, expose it to the air and it gets hot. Well, what you do is you put one of those between your GoPro and the chest mount and then you pinch the GoPro against it and it's going to get hot and it's going to keep your GoPro from freezing up. At least keep the battery from freezing up. And that's literally all you want. You just don't want the battery freezing up because if it does, lithium ion, when she gets too cold, loses potential. Like it can't discharge as much. And what I do with the whole plugging my external battery into the GoPro is, is the reason why the batteries are dying prematurely on the GoPro Hero 4. It's actually really hard on a lithium ion battery to charge it while it's cold. And I didn't realize that because I never looked into it. I just tried it and it worked. Then I got looking at the other GoPros, the newer ones, the GoPro Hero 7 and 8 and 9, and they're weird. And I'm wondering if that's the reason why my session hacks the way it is, but it's not because the GoPro Hero 7, 8, and 9 won't charge while recording. So if you have a USB adapter plugged into them through an external battery or an outlet, the camera will stop accepting the charge on the battery until it's actually stopped recording. So that kind of sucks because the fishing videos in the summer when Sarah and I go fishing, a lot of those I'm just straight shooting. From the moment I get down there until the time we leave, the camera's rolling non-stop. I got five hours of video that I can pick up on the SD card, so take five hours of video, chop out all the bullshit, only keep on to the good stuff, and away you go. And that's how I do it. Anyway, let's go to Walmart and see if we can freaking score ourselves a Tupperware, a tote, whatever. I'll see you guys at Walmart. Alright guys, we are back and I don't know if it's coming across on camera or not, but it is currently freaking snowing like a son of a goof out. Again, probably should have cleaned my driveway, but it doesn't matter. It'll be full of snow again by tomorrow, so we'll just be banging out double time tomorrow. Anyway, I got this container here. This should hold my fishing rod and my tackle no problem. However, I also bought some other stuff while there. Just some more propanes, the little tanks, because they're on sale. Actually, it was a good sale. It was $9.97 for two. Like, that's what Canadian Tire charges for one. So, regular, they were $9.97 a piece, but they had the twin pack on for $9.97. And I was like, then why are people actually buying the singles when you can buy a twin? So, I figured, you know what? Sorry for the awesome angle. That's what happens when you vlog and you only have two hands. You end up generating awesome angles. Um, I figured, you know what, we'll grab two just in case something goes wrong with shipping because, you know, it could. We got one loaded into the heater now. It's about half depleted and we'll have one for Saturday and one for Sunday in case that thing... Ah, oh, Jesus, Murphy. It's so hard maneuvering around shit in this garage. Anyway, so I'm just going to sit that there. Not a bad deal for a double up, so keep those in the sleigh just in case. Oh man, this container might not be big enough. Frig six, I was worried about that. Uh, also, I bought some pre-workout because it was on sale for cheap. So I was like, yay, pre-workout. Caffeine in the morning. Okay, I take it back. Everything fits in there fine. Uh, the rod's a little bent, but whatever, it'll be okay. And I got my tip up in there. I got my ice scooper, my uh, dead sticker, my tackle. The only thing I'm not putting in there is the extra propane tanks. And I don't even know, what the heck do you do with the depleted ones? Like, do you just recycle those? Do they go somewhere? I don't know, I'll have to find out. Definitely gonna have to do some sled organization, but uh, I think we'll be okay. Put the white thing on the bottom and then put the chairs in, put the shovel in, the bucket, or just ignore the bucket. I don't know, we'll see what we do with the bucket. And then put the uh, this thing on top, the ice auger on it, put the heater in, fish finder, frig, we're good. Ready to haul her out to the lake and go for another friggin' glacier dangle, boys. Now to navigate around between a garage door and a snowblower. Story of my life. So I came up with a cool idea for a project for old Busted here. Kind of upset that this rod broke too, because I really like this rod. This was the old, uh, this is my old friggin, I don't even know what the hell rod this is. The Advocate by, uh, doesn't say the name on it. I don't know who made it, but it was a nice rod. It was great until it snapped. So what I'm thinking is uh, I got a wicked project idea for this and that'll take place in the spring. But uh, got an idea, oh, went dark. Got an idea for it. So it won't be completely useless taking up space. Oh. Forgot my friggin' pre-workout. Like I said, I bought some pre-workout. Now I gotta go back around this friggin' thing. Oh, I just took the friggin' the chute crank and nuts. It wouldn't be so bad if there wasn't things protruding out the door, like this. Take that in the hoop. That's that's real fun. All right, I'm gonna go inside and 
We are good. We are ready for ice fishing, boys. It'll be freaking awesome. Can't wait. Four more sleeps. Probably less when you guys watch this. I think you're watching this on Friday, so for me, it's only Tuesday. Anyway, guys, it's freaking eight o'clock. It's time for me to shut her down and get to bed. Well, not right now, but like, I've been going to bed early, so I get a lot of sleep and it's been really good for both my mental state and physical state. Sleep is good for you. The more you can get, the better it is for everything, so. Get as much sleep as you can, especially in the times like this. Helps your immune system and all that other fun stuff. So, on that note, people, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, down below they go. And until next time, guys, remember, live to win, never give in. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.